All right, so you wanna build a gender affirming wardrobe and you don't know where to start. Don't look any further, I've got some tips for you that hopefully will help you out. So today I'm gonna to be bringing you 10 tips on how to do up your wardrobe and how to navigate style so you can feel more gender euphoric and more affirmed in your gender. So what is a gender affirming wardrobe exactly and how can we kind of get there? When I started uh, experimenting with my style and wanting to kind of do more with it, I felt a little bit stuck because I didn't know where to start, but I also felt severely overwhelmed because there were so many different ways I could take it. There were so many different looks I wanted to do. I didn't necessarily have all the resources or the money to do them at the time. And it was definitely a process of building skills, building ideas over time. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this, but you've got 10 different tips to explore at any time in your life. They don't have to be all today. Let's jump into it and if you've got any questions or anything else that you want to see from me, please pop them down in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. Number one, I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen. And I want you to close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think about how you're feeling overall and what your gender mood is currently. Do you feel kind of like more masculine? Do you feel sort of feminine? Do you feel fluid? Do you feel neither of those things? Ultimately, these feelings are gonna lead to some inspiration. Jot down anything that comes to mind. Pretty boy, masculine, gender bending, fluffy, cute. So number two, and now I want you to move on to some inspiration for yourself. Some goals, style goals that you have for yourself. Or what kind of aesthetic are you currently rocking? And how do you want to change that? Or are you happy with what you're doing, but you want to add on to that? So maybe you want to start wearing baggier jeans. Uh, maybe you want to start wearing more patterned button up. Think about some of your style goals in general. Maybe they connect to your previous gender moods. Maybe they don't. But ultimately, when you see all of these words down on paper, you can sort of make some connections. I want you to also think about your inspiration for your style. Like, where does it come from? Does it come from your friends and your family? Does it come from nature? Does it come from specific style influencers? My style inspiration uh, is people like Cello Man or Castle MacArthur. And um, who else is my style icon? I've got tons. But anything that's kind of a mix of um, what's super on trend, mixed with super retro clothes, with a bit of nostalgia kind of thrown in there. What we're gonna do now is you're gonna actually go ahead and browse your wardrobe. I'm actually going to take you on a bit of a vlog tour, why not, to the back of my bedroom, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. And I want you to think about what you don't really wear anymore, what doesn't speak to you anymore, or maybe what does, and I want you to slowly separate those clothes away. And here's my accessory wall. Here are a lot of my clothing items. I can already tell you right now, I absolutely love this, but I don't wear it anymore. And I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't speak to me, really. So kind of go through. So, you know, do I still like plaid? Am I still into these sort of pleather textures? What about pinstripes? And is are there any kind of jumpers that you don't really wear anymore? Um, what do you really like? Is there a color that really jumps out at you that you want to wear more of? I just bought this on Depop actually not too long ago, but it really is just not my thing anymore. I've also thought about the fact that I love these shoes, but I don't wear them as much anymore. So I think maybe blues aren't really my thing. Maybe I want to do more uh, fleece textures or denim. So go through your wardrobe and I want you to reorganize your wardrobe. So. I want you to physically go in there and try different things. So maybe you wanna group all of your clothes together in different patterns. Maybe you wanna group them, maybe you wanna color coordinate them. Uh, maybe you wanna just focus on an accessory wall. Maybe you wanna have something that visually inspires you to gravitate towards that and to actually experiment with what you have on that wall, but in a different way. When I can visually see them, I can visually see them also paired with something else that I wouldn't have necessarily paired them with because they're now in a different location. And I find that really helps just to kind of uh, spruce up my wardrobe. So I start pairing combinations together that I wouldn't have. Number four. Now I wanted to bring you, I guess, some practical tips if you want to masculinize your outfit. 
for masculine, a, so this is obviously a, a loose term and it can mean different things for different people. And I guess just a disclaimer here before I jump into all of this, that I want you to kind of, t you know, take from it what you want and what applies to you. And I also encourage you to adapt uh, my tips and advice to suit your needs as well. You want to start off with tons of layers, uh, as you can see, waistcoats, maybe you want to add a jacket on top. Um, think about pairing patterns together. So maybe you want to do a striped long sleeve with a t-shirt on top. So think about layers, but don't oversize your clothes. What happens if is if you're wearing like a t-shirt that's five times too big for you, what happens is it kind of uh, clings onto your backside. It has a tendency sometimes to hold on or cling on to your thighs or your hips. Uh, it also will be very big and baggy under the arms and around the collar, which means that if you're wearing a binder, you might not want that to show. So what I encourage you to do is just go maximum like two sizes bigger, but even one size is, is perfect. And then what you can do is layer on top. So you're looking for boxy, straight lined fits um, with jackets or waistcoats. waistcoats. So for example, um, this is pointed on the bottom, but you'll see it's straight up and down here. So it, it completely sort of gets rid of my waistline and it meets right below the belt, which is a length that I highly suggest for your t-shirts as well. Number five, when you're looking for trousers and you're wanting a flatter backside and you kind of want that baggier sort of skater fit, what you want to do is you want to look for pockets that are much wider and much more square that cover up the majority of the butt and sit lower down. And what that does, and I'm wearing a pair now, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of flattens out the back and it also kind of uh, gives the illusion that you've got a baggier jean on without them being super baggy. Sometimes if our jeans are way too baggy as trans mask folks, we can also get that uh, shape where it looks like we've got really short legs. You also want to look for is a longer inseam between the bottom here and the top. You want there to be more space from the bottom of the fly to the uh, center part down here. It will sit lower and it won't hug anything in that area. Rule number six and moving on, um, I wanna look at some style tips for trans feminine folks. On the top, usually um, for trans feminine folks, you wanna create more shapes and movement and flow because it gives more of a sense of curves and shape up top, um, especially if you feel like you wanna soften any squareness up top, ruching or ruffling, uh, or anything that kind of moves, anything flowy. I also highly encourage crop tops because it stops right here. It kind of gives that, it almost gives you more of a curvy shape because it stops right at the waistline. It almost creates more of a waistline. If I was to do this even, right? It kind of creates more of an indent and more of a shape here. And for bottoms also for trans feminine folks, I highly encourage like patterned leggings. Um, also anything that's got a stretchy waistband because again, for anyone, uh, jeans or anything with a fly or denim, they're really difficult to find the right fit. But I find like jeggings, uh, things with a stretchy waistband. I feel those are a really great place to get started with building a gender affirming wardrobe because it kind of gets rid of the frustrations and sort of the you know, the ongoing kind of, I guess, like agonizing process of finding a pair of trousers that fit. See, these are quite stretchies. They've got a zipper on the side, which allows for more give. So number eight is kind of going back to basic. I want you to think about one thing that you really love um, in your wardrobe. I want you to start there. So this is your one thing you're gonna pick. So think about it now, what is it? It's gonna be plaid, it's gonna be leather, is it gonna be denim? Is it going to be socks? Maybe you want new socks, maybe you want new boxers. So maybe for the next month or two, you're gonna focus on neon stuff. Maybe you're gonna get yourself some neon leggings. Um, maybe you're gonna get yourself some neon acrylic paint and you're gonna splatter paint some denim that you no longer wear. Uh, you know, think about ways 
that you can build off of that. So think of almost like an empty shelf that you got, right? And the first shelf is gonna be highlighter gear. The second shelf, you're gonna move on to skinny jeans. The third shelf, you're gonna move on to hats because you really wanna try out baseball hats. So you're gonna find some on Depop, you're gonna figure out ways to accessorize the one or redo the ones that you already have. Number nine, in order to build a gender affirming wardrobe, you don't have to spend tons of money. Facebook Marketplace, Depop, um, you can also do swapping, clothes swaps, things are opening up again. You can also look for Facebook pages where people are swapping or trading, and you can also upcycle. So number 10, there are no rules to anything. You can change your mind. You yourself can determine what is masculine, you know, what is feminine, what works best for you. There are no rules, so have some fun. Keep a Pinterest board, keep your inspiration going, um, keep an Instagram archive, talk to people, you know, have a Zoom clothing party or fashion show and show off to people what you've been uh, working on or you know, what you feel affirmed in and share those tips with other people. I hope that tips one to nine really helped you and I hope that my words of encouragement have inspired you to kind of like step back and to take your time with discovering how you want to present in the world and what kind of aesthetic you want to take on even if it is just for today. See you soon.